European Union says it is working closely with Ghanaian authorities to reverse the ban on some vegetable exports from Ghana. Ghana was slapped with the ban after the European Union intercepted some vegetables containing harmful organisms. The EU, through the Trade-Related Assistance and Quality Enabling Program track, has equipped the Customs Laboratory with equipment worth 1.6 million CDs. The EU ban covers pepper, aubergines and good, following an advice by the Food and Veterinary Office of the European Union. The Ministry of Food and Agriculture in September last year backed the ban and outlined plans to streamline activities of vegetable exporters and to make them adhere to world standards. Customs, as a major stakeholder in the chain of quality of food to be consumed locally and exported, has been empowered to check the standards of the products. Head of the EU delegation to Ghana, William Hanna, explained that the move to upgrade and modernize the custom laboratory with 31 machines will position Ghana to take advantage of the European market. We had a problem last year and some vegetables have been banned because of the difficulties in quality. Um, micro uh, organisms, um, little fruit flies have been detected and uh, that's very dangerous if that gets into the in, into Europe and, and spreads that's very dangerous for, for, for health in, in Europe. So we've had to ban a few products but we are working together with Ghana to remove that ban. Meanwhile, the Commissioner of Customs, John Vianney, has announced plans by the Ghana Revenue Authority to build a new modern laboratory to enhance the operations. The Minerals Commission has begun a series of advocacy workshops towards ensuring artisanal and small-scale mining operations are run efficiently. The Commission believes the sector, which contributed almost 34% of Ghana's gold production in 2014, has been driven mainly by poverty and lack of options. The artisanal small-scale and mining sector has been best known for its environmental and social challenges. However, a group of national business and community leaders believe that the ASM sector can be improved to become inclusive, responsible, rights-based engine for growth in Ghana. Chief Executive Officer of the Minerals Commission, Tony Aubin, at a news conference called for a paradigm shift. We want to move from small-scale mining, that is only done by people who want to eke out a living, like for only poor people, to people who want to create uh, uh, growth, people who want to create wealth, people who want to be working as mine workers, only working in small scale uh, uh, group, you know. So, so we also wanted to move away from people who worked illegally, adopted illegal practices and all that, to people who worked in a, in a well-organized, well-right-based uh, 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 situation. Small scale miner and coordinator of women in mining at the Ghana National Association of Small Scale Miners Amina Tahiru called on women to get actively involved in reforms. There are many, many challenges and obstacles in operating responsibly and we don't get any incentives. And that is not to say that we should not operate responsibly. And the reason why I chose to operate responsibly is one, I'm a woman. Two, I'm a mother as well and a wife, and I would like my legacy to be that a woman did this, and not just degrading the environment. Now, about 95% of Ghana's total production of cashew nuts estimated 68,000 metric tons in its raw form are sent to overseas for processing. Processing of raw cashew nuts into kennels in Ghana increased from 4,250 metric tons in 2009 to about 17,600 metric tons, but very low figures of 2,500 metric tons in 2015. Let's get onto the telephone line now and speak with the Honorable Ahmed Ibrahim, who is the Deputy Majority Chief Whip in Parliament. Honorable, if you can hear me, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, man. Good brother. Now, let's get some updates. How serious is the ban on export of raw cashew affecting farmers in your constituency and other growing areas in the Bonahafa region? 
Thank you very much, my good brother, and let me say a very good afternoon to your cherished viewers this afternoon. To be fair to the people of Ghana, I think the effect of the ban on raw cashew nut exportation is having a very negative and a very serious impact on the people of the Brown Ahafu, the Northern region, the Upper East region, and the Upper West region as a whole. I'm saying this because if you look at the cashew season, it is a yearly affair. The farmers started as far back as last year, signed memorandum of understanding with agencies and exporters of cashew who come to Ghana and buy cashew for export. These exporters brought money, signed memorandum of understanding with the farmers, gave those monies to them. These farmers used the money to clear their farms, make sure that they made fire bells all year round, so that at this time, which is the picking season, when they pick the cashew nut, they then give them, sell them automatically to those exporters who brought the money to, for them to engage into this cashew farming, buying of pesticides, insecticides, spraying, fertilizer, labor costs, and all those things. Mm. So now, if it happens that those exporters who brought the money and invest, gave it to the farmers by signing memorandum of understanding, with this ban is telling us that now those people cannot export the cashew. So what happens to the dollars that they brought and gave to the farmers? And how come the farmers pay back the monies that they collected from those exporters? That is in the first place. Secondly, it's going to serve as a breach of contract. Because you sign a memorandum of understanding with the person that, oh, I'm automatically going to sell my cashew to you. And at this price, mm. the bargain price at that time was around four cities, which was at a last year's price. And this year, luckily, it even increased to about 4.5. So if not this ban, the price would have even gotten to save Ghana cities. Now with the ban on the cashew export, what has happened is that within one week, the price reduced from 4.5 even to 2 cities, 50 pesos. So automatically, the farmers are negatively going to, sell, going to be impacted negatively. They are going to get half of the value that they should have been getting from their produce. And this is a very serious issue to me. Okay, so uh, you, uh, the, the revenue uh, loss is what you've just told me. From you, they, they are now reduced from 4 cities to 2 cities, 50 pesos. But this is one of the few issues that both sides of the house the majority and the minority have indeed uh, come to agree on uh, that's the members of parliament in the bona half region on both sides now the minister of trade uh, has been giving some explanation to the, this ban and he says that government or ghana is trying to expand its processing capacity and as a result would want that ban to be instituted to ensure that this is done i want to find out your thoughts to that reaction from the minister in the first place, the minister should, is insulated from the realities of the Ghanaian cashew situation. That is in the first place. Secondly, the minister cannot bring government into this matter. You know, the government of Ghana has a law which says that the ban on the importation or exportation of any goods and services per the law that the minister quoted, that's Article 503. Precisely. Subsection 13 of the Ghana Export Import Act 1995 clearly says that the Minister of Trade may by regulation or by legislative instrument present to Parliament and lay a ban on the exportation or importation. Neither of this has happened. Government of Ghana will not do this without bringing such a legislative or regulation instrument to Parliament. So the Minister should not even bring government in. If it was a government decision, cabinet would have approved, and the whole entire executive would have approved, the legislative instrument would have come, or a regulation would have come. And this is in Article 11.7, okay. Article 11, Clause 7 of the 1992 Constitution. No right. legislative instrument or no regulation can be passed apart from being laid in Parliament for right. 21 15 days. The minister knows this. Okay. Hmm. Honorable, thank you very much. Uh, we'll, we'll be following this case, see how it works out. Grateful, sir. As the Deputy Majority Chief Whip there giving us details. But that's it for business.